Then everyone realized it was gold here for the taking. But first, the prospectors had to buy pieces of land from the existing farmers. That's a big part of a gold rush, son. The rush to get the rights to the land, to stake your claim. So I stake my claim. What do I do then? You started mining, son. Getting that gold out of the ground. It all officially started in September 1886, when the government first proclaimed the gold fields. That was the birth of the South African gold mining industry. That proclamation changed the future of South Africa forever. So why did it change things so much? <laughs> the land was largely uninhabited back then. Just a scattering of farmers. But when the people heard about the gold, they started arriving in their hundreds, then thousands. And they all needed a place to stay, food in their stomachs, and their hunger for the gold built the city, son. Back then, this area fell under the control of the old South African Republic, under President Paul Kruger. Here's an interesting thing, son. In 1886, Joburg only had about two and a half thousand inhabitants. Some folks insist Johannesburg was named after our rock hard camp superintendent, Feldkornet Johannes Pieters Meyer. Wagons and horses filled the dusty streets with traffic. The bars and hotels were full of miners spending their earnings on wine, women, and song. It was mostly men, sir, living rough and working in extremely dangerous conditions. And over all of it, the thump, thump, thump of the stack mills crushing rock could be heard all day and all night. Nobody had dug that deep before. Nobody had the skills. And it was every prospector for himself, every claim being worked independently. To get the gold at first, they used picks and shovels, digging out the surface ore from deep trenches, zigzagging across the stony ground. Then the trenches were stepped as they went deeper and deeper into the sea. This was the beginnings of the first real deep level mining. Of course, they quickly realized that all this new equipment and all the extra workers mining to depths never reached before would cost a whole lot more money. Syndicates became the only answer. And that created wheeler dealing on a grand scale. For a while, the main activity was just a frantic buying and selling of claims, while the actual mining and the miners had to wait for the wagon trains to haul the machinery up from the railhead at Kimberley. Now the people who had the real expertise and the real money were the owners of the big diamond companies already established over in Kimberley. Companies headed by men like Cecil John Rhodes, Alfred Bite, Barney Bonata, A. Bay and Sammy Marks. These men became known as the Rand Lords, and all the money they made made them powerful and bought them political influence.